What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi. I'm a board certified psychiatrist making mental health content here on YouTube. And if you're new to the channel, I'm gonna ask you to please subscribe to the channel. It helps me to keep making this content to know it's valuable for you. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for your support. With that said, I'm gonna get right into today's topic, which is gonna be omega-3 fatty acids and mental health. What does the research tell us? What can we say about the use of this dietary supplement? on a daily basis. So let's set the tone here a little bit. Omega-3 fatty acids have been around as a dietary supplement for a number of years now, and they're reported to help with several physical and mental health conditions. They're termed essential because our body cannot produce these things. They must come from the diet, and thus they are essential. In fact, this is one of the supplements that I personally use a thousand milligrams of every day because I think it has value not only for my cognitive function, but also for my overall general health. And I'm going to explain why I think this is a good supplement to add to your daily regimen. So omega-3 fatty acids function in several ways. One of the ways that they function is that they coat neurons. So they can kind of coat the neuron and they increase cell membrane fluidity. So that will enhance neurotransmission. They also have neuroprotective properties and their most well-established mechanism might be the anti-inflammatory mechanism of action, which is gonna, of course, decrease inflammation in the body. Now, they directly affect something called arachidonic acid, and specifically they affect arachidonic acid metabolism because they displace arachidonic acid from the membranes and compete with it for the enzyme that catalyzes the biosynthesis of thromboxins, prostaglandins, and leukotrienes, which are all involved in the inflammatory process, thus reducing the formation of these products and, of course, reducing inflammation in your body. Now, in mental health, the most well-established use of omega-3 fatty acids is in the treatment of depression. Now, it's been looked at as a primary treatment as well as an augmentation strategy. The results aren't that great for omega-3 fatty acids when they're used as a standalone therapy. So if you were to say have a severely depressed person just take omega-3 fatty acids on a daily basis, it's probably not going to change their depression very much. However, when you add omega-3 fatty acids as an augmentation strategy to somebody say taking a medication for depression or receiving something like cognitive behavioral therapy, it seems like they work very effective. And the effect size is somewhere around 0.5 to 0.6, that translates to a moderate effect size. So I've kind of become the nutraceutical person and it is a passion of mine and something I'm very interested in. And I've done talks here on YouTube before to discussing the inflammatory mechanisms of action and how they relate to depression. So people with high inflammatory biomarkers actually may respond better to omega-3 fatty acid treatment than people with low inflammatory biomarkers. And if you recall from our previous videos, we use something called the ultra-sensitive C-reactive protein, and you could get that test done for a few dollars and find out if you are one of those people with a high inflammatory burden. Now, maybe outside of depression, the most interesting data on omega-3 fatty acids is its use in schizophrenia, specifically in the early onset of symptoms. It seems to work best if it's started early in the illness when you first see signs of, say, delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, disorganized behavior, all the stuff that kind of goes into somebody developing schizophrenia and the common criteria for the diagnosis. There also seems to be a reduction, this is a, le a legitimate biomarker here, reduction in white matter changes on imaging studies in those using omega-3s compared to those not using omega-3s who develop schizophrenia. So this raises a very important question and one we need to consider, and that is can we prevent or at least change the course of schizophrenia by using omega-3 fatty acids? And there was actually a great study that was in published in Nature Communications, and it looked at the outcomes in the prevention of psychotic disorders in Vienna. Now, they started this study with a 12-week trial of omega-3 fatty acids, which proved to reduce the risk of progression to a psychotic disorder in young people with sub-threshold, so sub-threshold psychotic states, for a period of 12 months compared to placebo. 
So what they really did was they did a 12-week trial where they gave some people omega-3 fatty acids, others not. And these were people who were experiencing what would be termed subthreshold or early symptoms of psychosis. They then completed a long-term follow-up study, and they showed that this brief intervention with omega-3 fatty acids actually reduced the progression to a psychotic disorder or psychiatric morbidity. So the people who received omega-3 fatty acids actually did better and didn't go on to develop the full-blown illness. So this is pretty amazing stuff and really interesting that, you know, potentially a natural product could be doing this. Now, what they did then was they followed this up a year after the omega-3 treatment. 5% of the people in the treatment arm, the ones who received omega-3 fatty acids, converted to schizophrenia, compared to 28% in the control arm. So the control group obviously converted to schizophrenia at a much, much greater rate. So the people who took omega-3 fatty acids had a much lower risk of converting to schizophrenia. Now, seven years later, the rates of conversion to schizophrenia were 10% for the treatment arm and 40% with most patients being retained in the study. So 40% in the control group. So obviously, again, what we see here is a significant reduction in conversion to schizophrenia in those who were treated with omega-3 fatty acids when they had sub-threshold psychotic symptoms. In my mind, what this translates to is there's very little risk to adding omega-3 fatty acids to existing psychiatric treatment. Now, the most common problems that people encounter with omega-3 fatty acids is something called fish burps, right? It's not very technical, but basically the fish oil will repeat on you and you will taste it over and over again throughout the day. Now, the way to mitigate this is to buy the enteric coated capsules and or refrigerate the capsules that you have that are not enteric coated. That's an easy way to get around it. Omega-3 fatty acids can also cause an increased risk of bleeding, so they can increase the bleeding time, and that requires careful monitoring if the person is scheduled for surgery or taking anticoagulant medications. What you want to do for those people is keep the dose at 1,000 milligrams per day, and if you want, in many cases where someone's not on anticoagulants or not um, at risk for bleeding, you can go as high as 3,000 milligrams per day so one fish oil capsule three times per day. You can use a supplement or you can consume fish. So you can actually get enough omega-3 fatty acids from your diet. You would have to consume a fatty fish such as salmon, herring, or anchovies two to three times per week to receive an adequate dose. So if you don't wanna buy the supplement, you could simply eat salmon three times per week, but that might be a little overkill. Now, the other key point is when you're selecting a supplement, you want to be sure that it has the correct purity and potency. You also want to be sure that you get an EPA to DHA ratio of 2 to 1. So there should be more EPA than DHA, and it should be 2 to 1. So, or you can get pure EPA. So either, either choice. So you can either do pure EPA or a 2 to 1 ratio of EPA to DHA. Just looking at the various supplements that are out there, the, the two to one ratio is much more common than pure EPA products. Now, what you can do to figure this out is you can go to consumerlabs.com and you can ensure the potency and purity of the product that you are buying. The total cost of adding omega-3 supplements to your diet is about $8 to $30 per month, depending on the specific brand. So you can get really expensive or you can go really cheap and you can find, again, good products at consumerlabs.com to make sure it's a quality product. So in my mind, there is very little downside to adding this to your daily regimen or other psychiatric treatment. And if you have somebody who's in the early phases of possibly developing schizophrenia, say an 18-year-old male who comes, to your, who comes to your clinic who is experiencing auditory hallucinations, you may want to consider adding omega-3 fatty acids right away. And the second piece that you're always going to want to counsel a person on is if they're using high potency THC products or cannabis products, they're going to want to stop that too. So start omega-3 fatty acids, stop using cannabis products, and you have a good chance of preventing this person from developing schizophrenia. So very interesting stuff. I'm going to hold the video there. If you guys have questions or comments, drop them below. I'll be happy to try to get to them and we can talk more about this interesting and exciting topic.